podcast. Hello, YouTube, it looks like. Man, YouTube, like, connects right. YouTube there. first. YouTube always comes on first. Yeah, they're quick. That's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, still waiting for the light for Facebook. Oh, I just heard something ding. Was that you or me? It wasn't on my end. It wasn't me. Mm-mm. Oh, I heard a ding, and I don't see anything here that was <laughs> that was dingable. Oh boy, it's probably it's not like a microwave for it. Damn, telling us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Us now. We're Facebook. watching you. We know you're talking about us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Those, those things are spying all over. You know, it's just terrible. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody talking about Big Brother and all that. It's all One there. minute yeah. until showtime. There's your Big Brother. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that cartoon where, you know, <clears throat> they say, you know, they're warning us that by 2025, mm-hmm. uh, they're going to have devices and all of us that they can track us and know where we are and what we're doing and all that. And the person who is saying that held up his uh, cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. I mean, it's already you know. happening. Where have you guys been? It's already happening. It knows where we are and, and, and you know what we talk about and everything yeah. else. It's yep. already happening. That it is. Oh. Uh, about 10, oh. no, 20 seconds. <sighs> Mine's almost right on. Mm, Mine, 10 seconds off here. I think. I'll see. 10 seconds. Uh, Your show will be 18, 17. Your show will start. Fifteen. Nope. Fourteen. Your show will go live in five seconds. Wow. Four. Oh, boy, I'm six three. Now. Two. There we go. One. Boop. Blog Talk Radio. Ready. Yeah. This is all about why the talk show dedicated to the wine industry since 2009. Featuring winemaker, cellar master, vineyardist, and tasting expert, Ron. Basically what we're trying to do on this program is just trying to educate people and trying to make wine less confusing and more friendly. From from coast coast to coast and around the world. You know, we really have had some some neat people on the program. I I just, I love that. Post your questions questions and comments during the live show on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash allaboutwinebtr. Again, that's www.facebook.com forward slash all all about wine BTR. And now, All About Wine is on. Here's Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bus people. Right to the, uh, thank you, bus people. The, yep, thank you for everybody out there for joining us. And uh, it's a Thursday. Yes, you know. Thursday, October, uh, nope, July 15th. So, I think I forgot what. Uh, 2012. Yeah. Uh, 2012. Sorry. So, yeah, <laughs> welcome. Glad you joined us. If you're not listening to us right now, then uh, you're listening to us on archives, which is cool. Yeah. We get a lot of people listening on archives. Which Absolutely. Way. So, welcome to the show. Yes. Got some stuff to tell you tonight. Just information, just cool stuff that I found. Uh, I told you last week that a couple of things I was going to talk to you about, and I couldn't get into it because they were part of the San Francisco Chronicle. And unless you subscribe to the Chronicle, they won't let you in. Well, when we got off the show, I went and started to look, and the Chronicle is giving me four months for 99 cents, which good deal. So I've got some things to tell you that I found in the Chronicle. I, I like the San Francisco Chronicle. I used to follow it years past anyway. And uh, it's just uh, they always have stuff. They always talk about wine, different thing, and all that on there because, well, it's San Francisco. It's right down the street from Napa. So it's uh, cool information and all that. So I'm going to tell you about that tonight. And then uh, let's see. What else? We've got some other bits of information here and there. As always, Interesting, uh, what, what is it, uh, Dateline? That's a do, 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 Dateline, you know, and so that's stuff that's happening now. And so, so, and 
Mike and I were talking before the show, and nothing's happening with us that is new and interesting. And just the dog days of summer here. Ugh. I saw yesterday where Death Valley, the highest temperature ever recorded in Death Valley, was 136 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the highest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Wow. 136 degrees Fahrenheit. A couple days ago, it got up to 134 degrees. Mm. Mm. Does it matter if it's a dry heat or not? <laughs> uh, no, no, they, you know, <laughs> you, know you hear that yeah. you dry hear that, heat, dry heat. Yeah, yeah you hear that joke about Arizona. My, it's like it's 119. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. Uh, okay. <laughs> dry heat. Yeah. My son used to live in Arizona, and he'd say that to me. He said, "Yeah, but really? that is a dry heat." I said, "They bake pies and cakes in dry heat." That's right. I was Your just Thanksgiving say, turkey sits in dry the heat. oven. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, it's. it's it's just bloody hot. I mean, that's all. But uh, they live in Atlanta now, and Atlanta's getting some bad hot weather. In fact, all across the country is getting some really hot weather. San Francisco is supposed to be uh, getting up to, what did I see, uh, 92, something like that, which is really, really hot for there. You know? mm-hmm. So they got that sea breeze coming in. For them to hit 92 is really unusual. And uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, Death Valley... It was like within two or three degrees of tying the all-time Earth record for heat. Um, so that's and wildfires. There's wildfires all over. I'm going to talk a little bit about those wildfires too. I get a little bit of information about that to go over and tell you about it. And well, unless you have something. To start us with your mic, I'll jump on in with both feet. No, um, I'm good. Just uh, sitting back, waiting for comments, uh, questions on the Facebook page uh, or our YouTube channel. If you've seen this video, I just sent out a little thing uh, about questions, comments about the show and or wine. Send it to us in the comment box wherever you see that message. And uh, let me know and I'll break in and, and uh, um, ask Ron or tell Ron or, you know, put it out over the air. Thank you. That's it. Sounds good. Now, you know, we always forget to say that too. We really should say that on every beginning of every show. That you know, you can get in touch with us uh, just going through Facebook or. I thought it was on the intro. YouTube. Isn't it on the? Uh, for, for, Is it? I gotta check. I, uh, I'll listen to it. <laughs> Hang on, let me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, we don't listen to the intro. We've heard it so many times. We don't listen. We re- repeat it, but we don't listen. Yeah. So yeah, if it is it good, it, yeah. 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 So, so let's see where are we going to start tonight. Uh, let's see what this this says here. Uh, well, no, that's not what I want. Might help if I go to the page that I want here. Uh, this is a quick one I'll tell you about starting out in San Francisco. Top twenty-five restaurants in San Francisco. All right, this year. Now the. Wine Enthusiasts came out with their top 100, I think, what, a couple of three weeks ago. It was just, it was very recent. And when they came out with their top 100, uh, you know, there was some around the Bay Area and different places like that. But uh, this is out of the San Francisco Chronicle. This is the 25 top restaurants in the Bay Area. Now, that's... Uh, San Francisco, I guess, North Bay, uh, across the Bay, Oakland area, stuff like that. And it's really, it's quite an encompassing area uh, to, uh, maybe you can talk about it. Uh, yeah, it goes all the way up to Napa here. It's, uh, you know, St. Helena. Avery is the first restaurant. Californios, Californios, that is the one on the list, the Charter Oak, that's in St. Helena. Uh, El Molino Central in Boise Hot Springs. El Paseo.com at dot com is in Oakland. Eaton, Palo Alto, that's south of San Francisco, and the city's going down that direction. And uh, Hing Wung 
company that is in San Francisco itself. Horn Barbecue in Oakland, Juanita and Maud in Albany, and that's over uh, around Oakland. Uh, Cecia, C-I-C-C-I-A, La Cecia in San Francisco, Sardinian Cuisine. Uh, Lion Dance Cafe in Oakland, uh, Singapore and Italian Cuisine. Los Carnalito La Mejor Camido Chilinga, which I probably destroyed that. I don't speak Spanish, but that is located in Hayward, which is south of San Francisco, right over on that side of the bay. And they serve Mexican foods, obviously. Lou's Takeaway in San Rafael, which is south. Uh, they serve, uh, what is it they serve? Uh, well, Pastry, uh, uh, let's see, slow cooked pork and uh, uh, salad and stuff like that. Uh, let's see, the Marshall store in Marshall, that's on Route 1 up the coast. Uh, they serve uh, an oyster, oh, they're an oyster farm on Tamales Bay, serving the finest specimens of smoked, barbecued, and raw oysters. Well, that sounds good. Mela Bistro in Oakland, an Ethiopian restaurant. OK's Deli in Oakland, that's uh, Asian American food. Pizza Lea in uh, Windsor, uh, up the coast, that's an award winning pizza in a modest small town storefront. Rentera in San Francisco itself, uh, California cuisine. Uh, uh, Shower Mia, Shower Mia, is a, uh, a Jordanian food, and that's located in Oakland. Another one in Oakland, Soba Icha, which is Japanese uh, food. Japanese buckwheat noodles are made by hand every day and used in a lot of the dishes. San Jose has Sogo Tufu, and you can imagine what they serve. Tufu, Town Restaurant in San Carlos. Uh, the steaks. Viridian in Oakland is a. I have no idea. Of uh, handy proper. Well, it doesn't jump out at me, so I don't know. Next one is Zarin's in Palo Alto and curries, kebabs, and rice dishes. And the last one is Zuni Cafe, Z U N I, in San Francisco. Uh, daily changing menu, depending on the season, uh, chicken, but uh, different stuff also. So, top 25 restaurants in San Francisco, according to this uh, review here. And since I went to that and told you about the top 25 restaurants there, we have to go and talk about the top 25 wineries in the Bay Area. Now, this is a fun list. I enjoyed this one because if you're going to go to San Francisco, you want to visit wineries. Now, it, it doesn't take much but to rent a car and head up to Napa or even down to Paso Rocos or go over the hills to Livermore. I mean, they're all within, you know, a half a day drive there if that much. I mean, Livermore is going to take you an hour and a half, maybe two hours if you're on traffic and, and you're right in the middle of a whole bunch of wineries there. So this is what the San Francisco Chronicle is saying is the top 25 wineries for the summer of 2021. Abbott's Passage Winery in Glen Ellen. Antica Napa Valley in obviously Napa. Ashes and Diamonds Winery in Napa. A tour, A U T E U R, A tour wines in Sonoma. Corson Winery in St. Helena. Uh, and it says here the Holy Grail of Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon at Corson. Uh, it says all devotees of Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon will eventually find their way to Corson's. So that's uh, quite a salute to them. Uh, Dash Sellers in Alameda, uh, Zimbabwe specialist there. Uh, next, we have, let's see, 
is Donkey and Goat Winery. They're located in Berkeley, or wherever the college is. Uh, natural Rhone style wines and uh, stuff in that area that uh, some Rhone wines. Faust, F A U S T, Faust wines in St. Helena, uh, Cabernet. Frog's Leaf Winery, I'm sure you all have heard of that. That's really a pretty popular winery. Uh, it is uh, organic, organic viticulture, and it's in Rutherford, up there, right in Napa area. Hendry Ranch Wines in Napa, uh, family run estate. Napa also has Hudson Vineyards. Uh, they are best known for their Chardonnay and uh, good good variety of Chardonnay. Idlewood Wines in Hillsburg, downtown Hillsburg, uh, and uh, Piedmont style wines. Now I would. I've been skipping this, and I really should have said this from the beginning, but Napa charges for wine tastings. Uh, they, it's not, you don't just walk in and say, I'd like to try some wines. You actually have to pay for it. And what started this was years ago, I think I told this story, but it, it's worth repeating. Years ago, kids from Berkeley and, and different areas around there and, and Stanford, which is just down the coast and all that, get on a weekend and say, let's go wine tasting. So they would all chip in together, rent themselves a limo, which, you know, 10 of them rent a limo. It's, you know, cheap. I mean, you know, 50 bucks a piece at the most. Uh, and they would travel up to Napa and Sonoma and around to different wineries. And this was before they were charging. And they would actually get quite soused before the day was out and they didn't care because they were riding in a limo and they didn't have to drive or anything and the tastings were free and they'd walk in and they'd taste until they said oh, okay that's all we've got and not buy anything turn around walk back out to the limo and head to the next one and this got out of hand i mean, as you can well imagine you start getting a bunch of kids do that the people that were really making out with the limos uh limo companies that were taking them up there and bringing them back. So the winery said, we can't do this. We're going to have to charge. We're going to have to set a reasonable amount of monies to charge for the wines that we are giving away. Because if we don't, it's going to get worse. And they did. And it started to put a skid on things right there. Because, you know, you can go up there and you can visit 20 wineries, 25 wineries in a day, not have to worry about driving and take some, oh, you know, even three, four wines at each one. And you're looking at probably two or three bottles of wine before you're done with the day. I mean, you know, and it, it got a little bit carried away for the winery, so they started to charge. So let me go back through this with you here. They have the tasting fees listed here, and I should have told you that at the beginning, but I didn't. Uh, this, the, the first one, Abbott's Passage charges $40. Antica charges 45 for tasting. Ashes and Diamonds charges 75 A Tour Wines charge 40 Corson, 55 Dash, 20 There's a deal. Uh, Donkey and Goat, located in Berkeley, charges 30 Foss Wine in St. Helena charges 75 Frog's Leap, 45 Hendry Ranch in Napa. Uh, it's a uh, uh, at the base of Mount Vitor, and you've probably seen Mount Vitor wines, but they do uh, they diverse wines, Alberino and Primitivo. Uh, they charge 40 Hudson Vineyards in Napa uh, has uh, properties all over the place. Chardonnay is their mainstay, but they have others. Uh, $65 for tasting. Idlewild, $35. They're located in Hills, Hillsburg, and they do uh, a uh, Piedmont inspired style wines. Iron Horse in Sebastopol charges 30 Joseph Swan Vineyards charges 20 Iron Horse has uh, oh, what? Where is it? 
Uh, champagne. Uh, that's one of the things. They do a lot of champagnes. Joseph Swan Vineyards is uh, on the Russian River. They're in Forestville on the Russian River. And they do a Zinvindel and a Pinot Noir, a couple of their main ones. $20 for tasting there. Cheap. Lola Winery, or Lola Wines in Calistoga. Uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and some rosé. $25 for tasting. Matthiasen Wines, Napa. They you do a uh, Cabernet, a Chardonnay, and a cup of Italian grapes that I've never heard of. So, uh, but fifty dollars for a tasting there. Medlock Ames Winery in Hillsburg, uh, Cabernet and Chardonnay is what they do. Uh, they're charging $25 a tasting. Reeve Wines in Hillsburg is noted for their, oh, geez, uh, Reeves and Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs. $35 for a tasting there. Ridge Vineyards, Monte, Montebello out of Cupertino, and Zimbados and some uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Fifteen dollars for a tasting. Robert Sinsky Vineyards in Napa on Silverado Trail. Uh, they are biodynamic farming, and they charge forty dollars for a tasting. They have a Cabernet Franc, and uh, I just saw something else there. Oh, well, Cabernet Franc jumps that at me a couple times. Um, Sainsbury Winery in Napa, uh, Pinot Noir, and they charge thirty-five. Strandsburg uh, Vineyard in Calistoga, that's a nice winery. I, that's been around forever. I've been to that. Uh, this is sparkling wines, and it is great sparkling wines. Uh, my dad used to used to love Strandsburg's Vineyard sparkling wines. He uh, I always said that the best champagne he ever tasted was when he was in World War II over in France. And he said Schramberg comes very, very close to that great French champagne he had. $50 to taste there. $35 for Thomas Fogarty Winery in Woodside. And they have uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Unti, U-N-T-I, Unti Vineyards in Hillsburg. Uh, they... Uh, Zimbabwe and Grenache, and I'm sure they have more here, but I don't see it right offhand. Twenty-five dollars for a tasting there, and then Vinca Minor Wine, located in Berkeley, they make several versions of Carignan, and they have been branching out. And what does it say here? Branching out to some. It says some other reds. I guess it doesn't say what reds, but it says they're branching out. But Caranon is the main one. And they charge $25 for a tasting. So, top 25, according to San Francisco Chronicle Wineries in the area. Uh, that's funny that they didn't go south to anything in the uh, Livermore Valley area there. And there's quite a few wineries, quite a few good wineries in Livermore now. And even further south down to Monterey. So, hmm. but these, most of these are all up in, from San Francisco north, which is cool. So, that uh, couple of, a uh, couple of articles there that I wanted to share with you. And let's see, uh, we got, uh, Okay, this one I have I have highlighted. Why do I have this highlighted? Let's go and double check and see why we have this highlighted. Uh, uh, huh, I don't know. Oh, that, that's it. I wanted to article. I wanted to read myself. And, um, but Dixie Fire explodes near Paradise. 
that is Paradise, if you remember, is where the 2018 campfire uh, burned down the city. And now you got what they're calling the Dixie Fire is in the area and is starting to cause problems again in that area. And it's, uh, let's see, uh, the fires northeastern push during its first 24 hours took flames away from Paradise and uh, moved away from the populated areas. But it, uh, the campfire killed 85 people in that area there and destroyed thousands of homes. So they're getting a little, a little scared whenever they see anything like that. The fire is about 10 miles from Concow. And so there's, it's not under control yet, but, and this is dated uh, the 14th. This is dated yesterday. So they expected it to be under control by this weekend. So a uh, big fire up there, but in the same area as the previous one. And that, uh, let's see. And, okay, those. Right there, and let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. Beverage dynamics have occurred. If the name is the tourism, what's the news for I listened to a podcast this past week put on by Beverage. Uh, Beverage Dynamics. Uh, it's a magazine. It's now I, I get it online. It's just easier. And it was talking about, in fact, I'm going to try to get the lady who was the one interviewed on the podcast. I'm going to try to get her on the show. If I can, I'll, I'll look up. I got her name. And it's, she's got so many credentials behind her name. That's going to be pretty easy to find her, I'm sure. But she was talking about the new dynamics in wine. She said that the millennials are really starting to set the pace on wine and how it's drank and how much you're buying and what you're doing with it and all that. Uh, interesting, interesting points she made. Uh, she did make a couple points. I'm going, eh, but overall, she you know, really made some great points. And, and she's got all these initials after her name and all that, you know, a master of uh, taster and of, uh, you know, some, you know, on and on and on. And so some people just love to get all those initials past their name. That's good for them. Uh, we know you're smart in wine. So, but it was an, an interesting interview. It was about know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes long, I think, something like that. But she talked basically about how wine is changing and how the millennials are starting to drive it now. And the boomers used to be the driving force behind wine and what was being bought, what was being sold, and how it was being made and all that. Now it's becoming more of the millennials. And she said it's it's a strange approach because they tend to go lighter and a little bit sweeter and the boomers tend to like it drier and heavier so she doesn't know if the taste is going to change in millennials as they get older or if maybe this is going to be the style that we're going to start seeing more and more and more uh I don't know. It was a question she threw out with no real answer. It was just one of those, this is what I'm seeing now type things. But I'm going to try to get a hold of her and see if I can't get her as a guest. Like I say, it should be easy enough to find her. But uh, uh, it's just, you know, it's a matter of just going and starting to do some search. And I will do that, and we'll see if we can't get her on the show. Uh this is something else I thought was was odd. This this article is entitled "A Possible End for Some California Wineries," and let me let me this is very very short, but let me read you why they are saying this. Monday, July twelfth. So this was uh, three days ago. Uh, the Bay Area. Are now on federal COVID emerging hotspot list. 
And this is what you need to know if you're in that area. There's no more safety net. Insurance costs for some California wineries are skyrocketing amid worsening wildfire seasons. Some are losing coverage altogether. That is scary. All right, let me editorialize here for one moment. Without insurance, they might just walk out of business because they're not going to be able to cover everything that if a fog, fire goes through. And you think, well, you know, they said the uh, the big fire the, that hit there a couple of years ago is not going to happen again. Well, I just told you that where the big uh, fire hit a couple of years ago, it's coming back, and there's one right around them again. So it's it doesn't just disappear. My vineyard is surrounded by thousands of acres of trees, said Andy Pay, co-owner of Pay Vineyards in the Sonoma County community of Annapolis. It's set to go. It's going to be, it's going to go in my lifetime, probably. It's been a standard practice for decades for the state's wineries to get insured against wildfire damage, as the risk was relatively low. But in recent years, major wildfires have resulted in claims costing tens of millions of dollars, which is not sustainable for insurance carriers. Since then, some carriers that cover wineries have simply withdrawn from the market. And there you go. If you have 20 people and this one's too expensive, you can always go there. Now you have 10 people, and they're all expensive. And some of those are looking at getting out also. And I've been hearing this for a long time. I'm, I'm, it's something that the wineries have always been concerned about. Firefighters thought they had snuffed out the lava fire near Mount Shasta, but then it exploded back to life, ripping through 25,000 acres and menacing thousands of residents. See, that's one of the problems. These things can just spring back to life. They don't know if it's dead or not. A brush fire striking Alameda and Contra Costa counties was scorched Sunday afternoon. And this is another one, Alameda, Contra Costa counties, right over across the bay, just right there by Berkeley in that area there. And... That's Berkeley's in Alameda County. That's uh, Oakland, Alameda County also. And when you start getting into the area, a lot of it's built up, but there's uh, a lot of areas that could definitely, you know, kindle fires and continue on from there. The state's largest wildfire, the Beckworth Complex, continues to grow and was 20% contained as of Sunday. Now, this is last Sunday. I'd like to say this was a week ago here, or last weekend. Bay Area temperatures sizzled Sunday, but will the heat wave continue to the work week? Yes, it has. I can answer that question already because this is the work week, and that has that has been happening. So this, these are things that wineries are facing out in California now, this these wildfires are starting to take its toll on insurance companies, not just wineries, but insurance companies. And so because of that, it is getting harder and harder and harder to get insurance. And you have to pretty much have to have insurance or else you're not going to be able to operate. And I think, and, and, and don't quote me on this, but I think some of the licenses that you get you have to show proof of insurance. So, yeah, I know here in Florida, there's there's proof of insurance is required on a couple of things. So, I don't know if it is in California or not, but you know, it's something that you have to be careful with, have to be you know, be on top of. And there's just no way you can say I'm self-insured. It's just it's not going to happen. It's just not a option when it comes to these fires and stuff like that. So let me get out of this and look at this next one here. Uh, yeah, this is another one that's talking about the wildfires and, and insurance also. This says, let's go to it. No, that's not going to give it to me. Is that? Yeah, here we go. Winemaker Matt Newman expected his fire insurance cost to skyrocket. The annual premium to insure his small vineyard and winery in Placerville, which is in El Dorado County, which is 
and the foothills up uh, foothills and mountains uh, Sierra Nevada foothills and mountains so when you're going east out of San Francisco you come to the first set of mountains and then you go through those and then right past that the rocky start so these are this is where the vineyard is he says his insurance has risen steadily over the last three years from seven thousand dollars per year to eight thousand five hundred per year to ten thousand per year and after last year's catastrophic fire season he figured maybe they'll even rise by 50 or 100 percent wow instead his fire insurance was revoked entirely when Newman's broker tried to find other carriers, he met more denials. For now, he'll be entering wildfire season uninsured. And there's something else, too. Insurance companies are out there to make money. And if they have to drop you, they'll drop you. I am always amazed. There's a statistic I learned a long time ago. During the Great Depression, out of the 10 companies that actually made a profit during the Great Depression, I think six or seven of them were insurance companies. It speaks for itself, really. Um, Newman says it completely changed the game for him. If a fire tore through and destroyed everything, he would be it would be a deal breaker. There would be no more wine and he would be bankrupt. And without being able to recoup any loss for the equipment, buildings, or wine inventory, he'd just shut down and that'd be it. He'd, he'd try to find different work. All across California, lots of vendors in the state's $40 billion wine industry are unable to protect themselves from fires. And this is the start of the wildfire. See, oh, actually, it's going toward the peak of it now. This is July. Winemakers were already vexed by smoke taint, and which is, you know, you don't have to have a fire around you to be affected by smoke taint. All you do is just have the winds favorable to blow that smoke and let it sit on top of your grapevines. And it, especially if you're in a little small valley or a little small indentation, that's where they tends to go anyway. Uh, which, because of smoke taint and the unpleasant smoky flavors, um, many of the wineries out there abandoned their entire production in 2020. It just was no use to trying to finish it. The scientific mechanism behind smoke taint remains poorly understood despite the huge financial toll is taken and may well take again. Although they're coming out with ideas and tests, it's still not fully understood. They're discovering that one fallback they counted on insurance to keep the properties uh, damaged by flames and smoke and all that is either extremely expensive or not available. Some vendors reported an increase of 300% or more. Uh, a small winery in St. Helena arose from 12700 a year to 54000 a year. And there is a large winery in Ukiah, which is, is further north from St. Helena, went from 38,000 a year to 290,000 a year. And then one more in Costoga, from about 200,000 a year to 800,000 a year. Oh my gosh, you can't, you, you can't keep that going. You, you cannot do that. And if you plan on keep that going, if you plan on doing that, you have to raise your prices. And guess who pays for that? Mm -hmm. You and me. Every bottle of wine we buy, there's a percentage of that that's going to go toward insurance. And it's becoming more and more of a percentage. The severe droughts already sparking fires all over the place. And insurance difficulties are underscoring all the realities of this. Uh, the Temecula, Riverside County to uh, Paso Robles, which is Lance, San Luis Obispo County to Mendocino. The state's more than 4,000 vendors are filling the problems 
that it is to protect their properties and their businesses from these fires without having adequate insurance or any insurance. Uh, Andy Pay, owner of Pay Vineyards in Sonoma County, said, my vineyard is surrounded by thousands of acres of trees. It's set to go. It's going to go in my lifetime, probably. Pay said he was dropped entirely from his fire insurance plan this year and has been unable to find another carrier willing to insure his property. People say, what's your plan B? Pay says, I don't have a plan B. And I understand. I, when Florida State Wine was in existence, they, we went through a surge in insurance costs. Uh, whew, let's see. In 2013, I want to say. 20, yeah, 2013. In 2013, insurance prices jumped almost 50%. And uh, it, yeah, I got the bill in and I go, oh no, this is a mistake. I called the insurance people and I said, this is a mistake. And they said, no, that's, you know, we reevaluated and reassessed. And that's always their their terms there, reevaluated and reassessed. And this is the reasonable price for it. I shopped around and I found it just about where it was before with a different company. Um, but, but these people don't have that option of shopping around because everybody is jumping up to those prices out there. Uh, you know, for decades, it's been the standard for California to insure against wildfires. But uh, a Nicholas Svetkoff, who is a broker at Risk Strategies in Burlingame, uh, who works primarily with wineries, said that uh, relatively few major wildfires affecting wineries. The equation worked well for insurance carriers. Then the 2017 season, when blazes, including Tubbs, Nuns, and Atlas fires, tore through Napa and Sonoma counties, that strained the equation. That year, Seth Cost Firm ended up with 180 claims totaling about $22 million, which is about two years' worth of premiums but you say, okay, that was a bad day. We're still profitable. And then last year, the glass fire blew up, and that entirely knocked the average and the whole equation wacko. More than 30 wineries sustained some damage, and many of them high-end producers selling bottles for $100 or more. So when those wineries went to collect on their insurance, it was no small sum. Each one of those wineries alone could be $20 million. For insurance carriers... They can't sustain that. So it's, uh, you know, catch 22 no matter which way you go. Since then, some carriers that cover wineries have simply just withdrawn from the market. Uh, it, it's just an easier way to do. Others are limiting the number of wineries they cover and looking at if it's wise to cover certain wineries or not. I mean, if you're surrounded by a bunch of trees and a bunch of brush and shrubs and everything, then you're not as likely to get insurance at a reasonable price, you've got insurance at all, than those who have taken care of the underbrush and everything. That's just basic business. Uh, there's an example of an insurance carrier that went out of business after the 2018 campfire because it was just it was too many properties for it to cover in one region, and it just couldn't do it. It couldn't keep up with the... Uh, uh, all the, uh, the claims that it had on it. So the implications for uninsured wineries are far-reaching, and it could mean uh, any number of things. Now, the state-mandated California FAIR plan, F-A-R, FAIR plan, is designed for uh, wineries having trouble finding insurance. It's a shared risk pool for people who might be denied by their insurance carriers. And we all know what that is. I mean, it, it, if you, you have ever shopped around for your own insurance and stuff like that, a lot of people call it the insurer of last resort and stuff like that because no one else would do it and you have to get it and they will take you, but a lot of times it's, it's going to cost you a little bit more. The Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles, the California Senate 
uh, State Senator Susan Rubio from Los Angeles County uh, says that uh, they're working on an expedited timeline to be able to get these wineries insured before these fires start going crazy, which I, I hate to tell you, Susan, but you're almost too late. This, this fire's already going crazy. And uh, so that's something you, they're looking at. If fire season hits someone that was hit by one of last year's fires, they're going to be out of business. Simple as that. Uh, Strasburg Vineyards in Calistoga, which was hit by the glass fire last year, said his premiums were previously 200000 with a $25,000 deductible. Now it's 800000 with a $500,000 deductible. And he said that would cover just 20% of the value of his buildings if they burned. He said it is not a comfortable feeling to know that that is a possibility there. So it is something serious out there. We may see wineries going out of business. It depends on how these fires. I mean, in the in the past, we would see a pictures of the fires and all of that winery burned down. Well, they have insurance and they're going to be back, and it's going to be something that you know they can build again and all. But that's not possible this year. This it's going to be something completely new. Um, there's uh, Martha Barra, who is quoted. She has a winery uh, called Ukiah Winery, and she was quoted 290000 premiums, which was up from $38,000 last year. Um, it's, it's staggering. It's staggering what it is. And that's just for major loss, too. I mean, if you start factoring in some of the little small things like the you know I want to I want to ensure uh, all my tractors you know replacement value that's going to jump up even higher and stuff like that so you you've got a problem with insurance in that area and wildfires and all that is not going to stop it's going to continue running rampant area it's going to continue burning stuff it's going to continue causing problems and as it does, it is going to cause wineries to close. And that's about all that they're going to be able to do is close because uh, far seems to be here to stay. It's, uh, the heat in the areas and stuff like that is not, not going away. <sighs> sad, sad, uh, sad comment on everything, but that's you know what's happening there. Uh, what's that? No, I didn't. Okay, let's see. Is that the link I want? Let me see. Is it? It isn't. All right. Let me see. Is that the link I want? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's another article on. On the insurance, I mean, there's this, this constant, constant articles about the insurance and what what's happening in California with the insurance and all, and the heat. Uh, it's just warming up. The Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, is just getting extremely hot. Uh, I told Mike before the show, I guess it was before the show, I don't know, were we on the air when I said that Death Valley is has the hottest temperature ever recorded in the world at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Last Sunday, it hit 130, 133 there, and expect to hit 134. They don't expect it to be broken, but they don't know it. It could jump up above that. 135 level and just yes, be done with it just immediately set a new record and all that so it's extremely hot out there and, and it's hurting and water situation is outrageous too these vineyards are not being able to get water they normally get the water like especially the ones in southern california are getting their water from the uh, uh oh geez 
the lake, the big lake. I can't think of the name of it. What is it? Um, Hoover Dam behind him. Lake uh, Mead. It's Lake Mead. What is it? Lake Mead. 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 Yeah. yeah that's, there you go. Yeah. Lake Mead. Oh, I should have known that. That's Lake Mead. Uh, Lake Mead is way, way down uh, in water. Way, way down. And because it's so far down, they're talking about putting restrictions on the amount of water that can be used in farming, which in Southern California, that's where they get the water for everything. And if they put restrictions on it, that could affect vineyards. Again, uh, like, you know, it seems to always do. So that's uh, another problem coming up there. So it just it's it's outrageous what's what's going on with that. Uh, the uh, California is hurting all the way around in a lot of stuff, but grapevines do have an uncanny ability to find water. They will search down for water. The the roots will go, dig down deep and find water and feed the vine, keep it alive, keep it going, because they want to keep their babies alive, which is the grapes. If they keep those alive and keep those going, then they will obviously be able to reproduce, and that's what plants are for. Uh, they want to continue their lineage, and the only way to do that is to keep the grapes alive so they can germinate and get better plants. So, I, you know, if, if they do or not, who knows? It's uh, it's something that's becoming a major, major problem there, and we, uh, well, we feel for them. We really do. It's, it's a tough thing. Castle Ridge Winery in Iowa, they're having some heat up there, too. Castle Ridge, Iowa, Edelweiss, Iowa sweet corn and grilled chicken. There you go. That sounds great. What what a great combination. Tassel Ridge, Iowa Edelweiss brings out the fruity flavors and sweet corn and both pair well with the Mediterranean grilled chicken breast. Uh, a recipe and a suggestion for you. You can check out the uh, Tassel Ridge Winery at Tassel Ridge Winery. Info at Tassel Ridge, T A S S E L, Tassel Ridge. Uh, they also have gift shops. They're 50% off shipping with a 12 model purchase. The Idlevice is the wine of the week. Uh, rains are slowing the work in the vineyard. They're getting a lot of rains up in Iowa uh, and that area. I checked how the rains are going across the country, and they're getting quite a bit of it up there. Uh, and the blueberry wine uh, for Tasker Ridge is coming along quite well. The food service is not available at Tasker Ridge yet. They haven't started that up yet. Masks are required in the winery. If you go to the winery, you're, you're required to wear a mask in there. But if you're tasting, obviously, that is not a requirement. But uh, Tassel Ridge, uh, located in southern Iowa, in uh, a uh, little town called Leighton, L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N, uh, they're just uh, southeast of Pella and northwest of Oskaloosa. So they're uh, pretty easy to get to. They're just, you know, uh, just down from... Des Moines. If you're going into Des Moines, then it's a quick trip to check out Tassel Ridge Winery. Okay, let me see. I had, uh, uh, okay. Wine Folly. I, re, I, I, I talk about Wine Folly all the time. I quote a lot of their stuff. I plagiarize a lot of their stuff. I do all stuff. I said it's it's a good site. It's got a lot of stuff about wine, and uh, the 
girl who uh, who does it, and for the life of me, I don't have her. I can't think of her name right now. I'm terrible at names, you know. Uh, don't have her name, but who does it does an excellent job. She always has some new things coming up and everything else. But they have a new map out, uh, a region guide for Napa Valley, Napa Valley wine country, uh, and it's really. A nice guide. It's a regional map and tells about Napa Valley and all the different areas and all that, and the wineries in there and a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff on the map. You can go to winefolly dot com. W i n e f o l l y winefolly dot com, and check out all their different maps and all their different uh, books and everything. They've they, it's got all sorts of posters and just a whole variety of things that are always interesting. If you have yourself a, a wine room that has extra wall space, then you need some of their mats and stuff to hang up on the wall. So uh, it's winefolly.com, and they got a new one out with Napa right now, which is uh, really a nice map. I, I like this map. Uh, let's see. The... Uh, Oh, is this is the one I wanted to talk to you about? Uh, hmm, no. Wow. There's, some, there's an article I want to talk to you about, and I can't pull it up now. Uh, let's see. A Dixie fire explodes near paradise. That's that's where the campfire was. The Dixie fire. Uh, that's that's the one that is the main concern right now. Where that is and the areas that it's affecting and all that. Uh, right next to the campfire uh, where it burned. You think well that was three years ago. Beyond three years, you have plenty of chance to get some more ground cover and just enough stuff to burn. And that's the problem. You just enough stuff to burn. And is this what I wanted? What is that? Uh, no, that's not it. I, it's hard to bookmark different things on these uh, when the San Francisco Chronicle does stories and stuff because the... Uh, it doesn't bookmark one thing. It bookmarks the whole paper, the whole thing. And so, therefore, it's hard to do it. Uh, climate change is challenging German Rieslings. That's something I want to talk to you about, too. Uh, German Rieslings, I, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and uh, my niece and my great-niece, I guess it is, uh, came into town. They were in town for a few days. They stopped by this past week, and we were visiting. And they're big German Riesling fans, and they enjoy the uh, German Rieslings and the Gewürztraminers and stuff like that. But the German Rieslings, they're saying, uh, is changing a little bit. Uh, the uh, uh, the aging process in it is changing and using different types of wood because of climate change. And because of that, uh, the extraordinary dry and hot weather and pest infest uh, infestations and caused uh, uh, to change, which is making for a different profile. And some of the wines, some of the wines that have been around for a long time, people are used to uh, the slowly rising in the average temperatures in Germany from the 70s to the 80s. Uh, average temperature in 76 was 15.7 degrees. Uh, and if it got that high, uh, Celsius, then it was a, a spike. But most of the 80s and 90s saw the average temperature at 13 to 15.8. And then 2013 to 2020, the lowest average temperature was 15.5, and the highest has jumped up to 17.8. These are these are warm temperatures. It's, it's you, different 
grapes, the classic grapes of Germany, the Mueller Thurgau, the Riesling, Pinot Blanc, uh, Grenache, even the Cabernet, Syrah Merlot, Pinot Noir, they cannot live in that heat. They, it's not sustainable for them. They can look for their water, then they can usually get water, but it's still burning up the grapes and burning up the vines and burning up their growing capacity. And, excuse me, and it's also affecting the alcohol level, ABV, alcohol by volume, um, because of the heat. So it is becoming a problem to continue the same profile. They gave me a nice Riesling as a present, uh, actually uh, Reinhausen Riesling as a present, and I haven't haven't opened it yet, but uh, I'm familiar with the vineyard, and it very good uh, back when I last had it. But this is going to be different, and I'm already anticipating the difference in it because of the heat. And so it's going to be interesting what's going to happen with German wines with the heat going across the country like it is and how the climate change is affecting the quantity of the grapes and uh, it's boosting the harvest substantially, uh, but it's not really giving you a good profile of you know, it's just tons of wine is being made, but it's not. Well, it looks like I was disconnected again. Hold on a second. God, this is every week. Love Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog. You are now in the host queue. It's affecting everything everywhere. It, it's Unneeded. absolutely amazing how much it, it is affecting all the areas. And wildfires are starting to take their effect down in Australia a little bit, too. There are some wildfires working their way around Australia, which is really something considering that Australia is now also in winter. They're, they're in the, there's... Well, not yet. Technically, they're still in fall, just like we're still in spring. But uh, it's not the time of year that you normally see wildfires down there. But it's been so hot, and after the devastation of the mice that they went through, and uh, all the other stuff, it could really take its toll on the vineyard overall, on all the vineyards around there. So. You know, bad news on the doorstep. I couldn't take one more step. Uh, Napa is uh, looking at something other than Cabernet Sauvignon uh, for future because of the heat and uh, climate change. And so these are all things like I told you before. I've talked about it before, and we'll keep on top of it, and we'll let you know and what's happening with it and what's going on with it. And, you know, if you're looking at getting a vineyard, millennial wine opportunity in Mexico. So if you want to travel south of the border, you're a millennial. There is lots of work for millennials and wineries and all that down in Mexico. Just to let you know. And... We're done giving you bad news for this week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's really sad because I read through this stuff here and it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. you just, what, what are you going to do? That's terrible. Yeah. What can you do? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't control the fire. It's, it's, and, and, yeah, you can't control the fires. The insurance companies, I mean, they're a business, obviously. They don't want to be losing money, and they can't insure everybody, and then pay out all this money they don't have. Yeah, and it's it's really really a, a tough situation with these. Yeah, uh, with the fires and all that. Uh, but they, you know, they need to go in and they need to, you know, start spending time cleaning up brushes and all that around the vineyards and and all that area out there. I mean, they're 
I can understand sustainable growth. And I understand, you know, having a cover crop between the rows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But get away from the edge of the vineyard with with the trees and stuff, you know, and go back 10, 15 feet and yeah. give it a chance to break before it gets in the vineyard. And, but I, I don't know. It's just, you know, that, that sounds like a simplistic solution, and it may be, but it's it's a sad thing there. So. Yeah, it is. Well, um, so on those uh, positive notes, <laughs> we're going to uh, uh, close, close the show down for uh, this week, unless you have any last-minute uh, things to, to talk. Um, we will return uh, July nope. 22nd will be uh, next Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Time, right here on uh, Blog Talk Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in, and um, have a great week. And if you have any questions or anything, uh, comments, feedback, uh, send it to allaboutwine101 at gmail.com. 101. Remember that. So send an email. Ron will get it and uh, respond to you. And who knows? Maybe we'll give you a call on there. We want to hear from you. So, That's right. So do it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Do it. Do it now. Do it now. Yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> All right. Oh, that's still too loud. Okay, here we go. And here goes the outro. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Right. This concludes tonight's broadcast of All About Wine with your host, Ron. For show information, links to All About Wine on Twitter and Facebook, or to be a guest on this show, visit the show website at www.allaboutwinebtr.com. Archive shows are available for download on iTunes or on our show page at blogtalkradio.com forward slash allaboutwine. Thank you for listening. Drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time on All About Wine.